Because now, more than ever, we must show discipline, tolerance, and production. 649 classic classic merchant uh, from that difficult economic period that we experienced uh, around the mid to late 1980s but uh, indeed uh, challenging times now so let's focus on the economy and the annual event put on by the University of the Western East St. Augustine campus uh, scheduled for tomorrow and Friday it's a staple event and now in its 16th edition hosted by the Department of Economics the conference uh, would itemize what the department views as the key economic issues facing in the country and appropriately we have economist Dr. Marlene Atz, a lecturer at the Department of Economics, joining us uh, this morning to talk about what people can look forward to with the event over the couple of days. By the way, it's a free event, the magic word of course, especially now in, in, in our difficult economic times. Uh, Dr. Atz, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. What's going to be happening over the next couple of days? Good morning, Fazir, and thanks for giving us the opportunity to talk about our conference on the economy. As you've correctly stated, it's a staple event. We've been hosting this. It was first started by the late Professor Dennis Panton and so the likes of Professor Panton himself, Dr. Trevor Farrell, Professor Carl Theodore, essentially bringing to bear and sharing with our key stakeholders because we are, we, we are, we are responsible for reporting to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, reporting to the people of Trinidad and Tobago what we thought in those days were some of the key economic issues. And we've continued that tradition and this year we're talking about the issue of climate change, disastrous management and sustainable development. And it's and it's interesting, you know, how fortuitous these things are that you were talking to the Minister of you were chatting with the Minister of Woods on the issue of flooding. And it's one of the impacts of climate change um, that we can actually see in Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, some people have been already suggesting that the heavy flooding that we've been seeing is as a result of climate change. But it's a combination of things. Um, the change in climate is one factor. The fact that we're not quite looking after our water courses in the way that we're meant to be doing, land degradation, etc. But our conversation on Thursday and Friday is about climate change, disastrous management and sustainable development. And it's extremely timely because some of your viewing public and your listening public may be aware that there is a, a big international meeting called COP27 that will be taking place in Egypt um, from next week. And at that meeting, um, all of the global players, big, small, in between, small island developing states, macro countries, developed countries, will be having conversations around climate change and about how we're going to, to deal with managing what we call the carbon footprint. Essentially, all of those greenhouse gases that are being emitted into the atmosphere that is causing things to change, causing changes in seasons, causing more hurricanes, causing droughts in some areas, causing melting of, of glaciers, etc., which could lead to flooding, causing havoc in terms of food security. So so overlay the, the topic of the day in terms of Russia and Ukraine in terms of food security and add climate change to that mix and um, add COVID-19 and you realize that we're, we're at an interesting space globally. So our our mandate on, on Thursday and Friday is essentially to share with the people of Trinidad and Tobago and the wider community because it is free, as you as you mentioned, and there are Zoom links available for business to register for the conference. Our mandate is really to share some of the research that has been going on and to, to add to the public information and the sensitization around these issues. Okay, so let's, before we develop a, a bit further as to what's going to be coming up uh, in the next couple of days, just let's give everybody the nuts and bolts of the event, uh, the, the, the times, uh, and indeed, what do they have to do if the general public would like to, f to follow the discussions that will be taking place? All right, so you have to do very little, simply have to get in front of a device that has an internet connection, so whether you're at home or whether you're on your mobile device, um, log in to the, the Faculty of Social Sciences, Department of Economics. I'm not going to call out the entire URL, but FSS. So if you search on the UE website for FSS, as in Faculty of Social Sciences, forward slash economics, and then immediately the quote, um, C-O-T-E, Conference on the Economy, those details um, will come up, and you can go on, you can follow the, pro the protocols to register it is absolutely free it is from 1 p.m tomorrow to 4 p.m and again on friday you can tune in so there will be some formalities at the start we are pleased to welcome um ian durant who is the director of economics from the caribbean development bank we felt it was important to have 
uh, a regional, international player, speak on the issue of climate change in this context because the CDB, of course, as a regional entity, engaging with the, the borrowing member countries from the Caribbean, but also engaging with international um, donors, understands very intimately how climate change can impact on Caribbean economies. So we're very pleased to have uh, Mr. Ian Durant as the feature speaker for our event. And of course, it then continues into that high quality of research and conversation thereafter. And in, in the time that we have available till, till 7 o'clock, from, from your own experience, as you said, this, this has become a, a flagship event uh, started by the late uh, Dennis Pantin. Are you satisfied that it achieves its objectives as far as informing the wider public, informing business leaders? And, and therefore, there's solid, verifiable information that people are prepared to act upon. I, I kind of knew you were going to ask me a question along those lines. If it was you... And I have to say, honestly, no, I don't think we've, we've, we've had the kind of impact that we should have because our population is still very much um, disengaged. Or let me qualify that. The population still sees the University of the West Indies as, for want of a better word, an ivory tower, which is why many of us continue to work in the fields trying to communicate to the population trying to bring to bear the information, trying to bring to bear the information in a, in a way that, that is palatable and it is in layman's terms so that they can understand. So so we, ca we have been prodding for 16 years, and you know that is not an easy feat to be continuously kind of trying to, to break down those barriers in terms of the communication barriers. But we're hoping that people will tune into this because many see climate change as, as an esoteric issue, and it is not, not esoteric. It is something that is going to impact on our lives and our livelihoods so we want people to use the opportunity if never before use the opportunity while there is a lot of conversation around energy transition the fact that Trinidad and Tobago's economy is heavily dependent on fossil fuels the prime minister and the minister of energy and their teams have a conversation to be had in Egypt about transitioning out of fossil fuels into renewables we want the population to use tomorrow and Friday as an opportunity to be more aware and okura with what is happening, to be exposed to some of the research that we're, that we're doing in the department, but also to use the opportunity to ask questions. Will, will there be the opportunity for that, for, for just the general audience to, to pose questions? Absolutely, there will be the opportunity for that. Otherwise, it will make no sense. We want the, we want the population not to be, there will be some academic papers, so I'm going to put that out there, but not to be in any way discouraged by those papers because you feel that it's something that you don't understand. Use the opportunity to ask mundane questions. What is this thing called climate change? How it is going to impact on me as a farmer? How is it going to impact on me as, as a home, somebody who, who owns a home, who runs a home, who has a family to deal with? How are these things going to touch my very my day-to-day -to -day existence and my day-to-day -day life? Because trust me it will have an impact climate change is something that that is a great equalizer it is going to impact on all of us in different ways and, and it's interesting that you you, you say a great equalizer because uh, even even with the flooding and, and rising sea levels and different weather patterns will affect everybody but those in, in better economic circumstances won't suffer the consequences as much and therefore the imperative is, is surely to, to understand that this is not something you could stop and therefore, if you ain't dealing with it now, you're going to pay the price later. And Fazim, you have just aptly defined what we call adaptation in the climate change literature. How are you going to make adjustments to deal with the impacts? And you're correct. Some persons will be in a better position, not absolutely, but they'll be in a better position to withstand the impacts of climate change. Some persons will be in a worse position. The learning opportunity that comes out of the conference on Thursday and Friday is to, to understand how we navigate that space as individuals, but also how the country will have to start thinking about navigating that space. So we're treating with flooding almost as, as a separate issue from, from everything else. But flooding goes back to how we maintain our environment. It goes back to how people maintain their homes, how people maintain their spaces, how the public water courses are maintained. So all of these things are interrelated, and I think it is it is an opportunity not to be missed in terms of being part of that conversation and extracting some of the learning opportunities that we're presenting to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And therefore, before we go to the top of the hour and the news, just remind everybody once again, uh, Dr. Atz, how they can log in to be part so of the event. You log on to the UWI website. Um, you, 
you go into the Faculty of Social Sciences, FSS, you backslash economics. It's one of the departments in the Faculty of Social Sciences, and you will see all of the information on the conference on the economy, COTE 2022. Log in, and we're looking forward to welcoming you to our conference. Dr. Hatz, thank you very much once again for taking the time to be with us this morning. Thank you, Fazir, for having us. Have Take a good care. day. Dr. Marlene Atz uh, with us uh, this morning talking about that very important uh, dialogue taking place. And again, it's an opportunity for all of us uh, to follow uh, what is happening. And you can pose those questions which could be quite relevant to you and indeed uh, wider Trinidad and Tobago. It's 7 o'clock. We are at the top of the hour. The first hour of Morning Edition is concluded. It's time now for the news.